our last speaker is Mayuli Bales from uh, Casa Guadalupe in, in Cold Spring, uh, who is going to speak to us on entrepreneurship and immigration. Thank you. And my name is Mayuli Bales, like Professor said, and I am the executive director of Casa Guadalupe. Casa Guadalupe is a non-profit organization, and we've been founded in 1996 like a Hispanic ministry. Last year, June 5th, we turned to be a non-profit organization, 501c3. This organization focuses in five different programs. One of them is the women's group. And the women's uh, get together like in the Latino flavor of gatherings. We come together to talk, to join food, and they name the group Las Comadres. Las Comadres mean women's together just for a talk with no one specific agenda. This group generate different topics of conversations and one of them was how to be an entrepreneur. That was very a new concept. They, they have skills like Yolanda was talking about, different kind of skills. And it was a long discussion, probably by months, to decide what kind of business the women want to do it. It was from sewing clothes to paint pottery. Finally, they came to an idea to create piñatas. They've been looking to cook food. That was one of the first things that they, they put at the table of the discussion. And they found that there was a lot of regulations in selling food. And they need to take a lot of classes and get certifications and license. We are talking about a group of women that are probably the high level of education is third grade. Uh, the literacy is no, uh, in many cases, uh, more than that. But they are very creative. I was delightful to listen to Yolanda's presentation because our women are so creative, very visionary, very, very resilient community, very ongoing with the ideas and the, and the purpose that they put on the table. We're talking about 20 women talking about open a business. That was the first uh, concept to, to, to put on the table. What happened really was uh, that the group started having conversations, divided into what they want to do, and finally the group come to be eight women. These eight women decide to do piñatas, and at some point the decision was made, and there was a perishable product will be no problem to create certain number of piñatas and storage it was no sell and end of the problem. But what well, the first question is with what money? Who knows what to do piñatas? We learned that there are more than one technique to do piñatas. What technique will we be using? Who will be provide the money? What it will be the space? So all these questions that you know you start you start putting together came to the table and the conversation continued in a group. Um, it's valid to mention that these women are many of them from Mexico and Guatemala, south part of Mexico. They have a concept that is called El Tequio. Not tequila, tequio. Tequio means moving in community, creating something not just for yourself, but for the community. So with that philosophy on mind, they decide what would be a collectible product that could help them to move on. Move on meaning having skills to continue start a business and continue the business, to learn what are, was the needs in the market, to learn how to market in the product, and to have resources for what they want been, been thinking to do. We are in the middle of three uh, high-level education institutions, and one of them is St. Ben's. We bring the idea to one of the professors uh, from the administration school, and she helped us to connect with that bank. Before we decide to go with the school, we have a very hard experience. These 20 women went one day to the bank and we bring it in purpose to know what was going to be the process. They talked with the clerk. It was a very um, hard situation. The bank uh, clerk was very nervous while we are in the bank, while we don't speak the, the English language, who will be the interpreter, what kind of
kind of question these women are asking? Almost like, you know, you don't get it, you, you don't have access to, uh, to, to money here. Under what circumstance make you to think that you have the access to ask us for money? So what's that learning process? And that was the purpose of the group, how to do it, how to, to, to overcome the barrier that it was more than one. Finally, we connect with the professor from San Benz, and they connect us to an institution that is called Banco de Esperanza. And Banco de Esperanza gives us the first $2,000 to start the project. And with this money, we start uh, doing 80 piñatas last year. It was a learning process for the women. Discipline was one of the big uh, barriers, not the language, not the money, not the place. Who show up to work the hours that they need to, to work? And who will be uh, able to, to pay to them for what they've been doing? That was the second question that came up there, the third Saturday that they get together to work on this. And then, the tension between the group, it was very high. The women from Mexico versus the women from Guatemala. We need to do a lot, a lot of uh, uh, intentional uh, community development. Between us, we are Latinos, but that doesn't mean that we, we are going to react or think in the same way. So the agreement with Banco de Esperanza, we need to, they, they borrow the money, but then we need some resources. We went back to the, to the school and we say to them, we need definitely to build capacity in this group. How the school can help us through their department to give us the technical resources that we need. How will be marketing, who will be buying? We have these 60 piñatas. Who will be buying these piñatas? So they help us, definitely they create a marketing program for us. And they, um, not just that, but they give us the opportunity to have some students coming every Saturday to Casa Guadalupe for three hours to take care of the kids. Because you know how we move on packs? The women came to work every Saturday. And when we found why you don't show up last Saturday, you sign up for that, was because they don't have who take care of the kids. So we need to create different components and these work hours in the workshop. The workshop was the back of the church, and many problems start arising. Where to storage the materials, who, how to buy more materials at low cost, how to create a piñata that really paid back the cost with not too much materials and time involved. So many exercises were we been resolving at the time of, the, of creating this cooperative. This is the second year. We've been uh, getting other $4,000 for the project. The compromise is to create 120 piñatas by June 21st. And we were selling, like last year, the students from St. Ben's helped us to connect with the um, marketing here in town. And they give us one day, Wednesdays, a booth free to bring the piñatas and the opportunity to sell it in that bring us to connect with a community that we don't have access if we continue in Cold Spring that is 20 minutes from here. We create some um, partnership with teachers from the 742 school district, the immersion program. They do some cultural celebrations and they uh, compromise to buy those 12 piñatas a year. So little by little we are getting some contracts and some opportunities for the women. The group actually is uh, founded uh, with 12 women from the community. The idea is that they can legally turn to be a cooperative. And we are in the process to, to get the, the paperwork for that. It has a cost too. We applied for a grant with United Way and we are in waiting to know if they will be helping us to fund that. Um, the idea for them is to be able to create a job. It's a status to be, to be self-employment. And not just that in their case, but it's an opportunity to work 
in a flexible hours with the kids besides them and no pain in daycare that is a high cost. Definitely you can see that we move in a micro entrepreneurial world but always with the background of our community. It's safe to move in community. It's safe to go in groups to the meetings or to talk with the schools uh, to ask for the money that we need it. Um, I don't want to, to be redundant with what uh, uh, Yolanda and Rogelio have been talking about. Definitely for us, I guess the, the social network is a key piece to move ahead in any, any business situation. How to make our community to be thinking in business manners? To me, that is a key question. How to make them to learn they have the capacity, they have the, the desire, but how to bring this education at the level that they needed at this moment? How to connect with higher level institutions like San, San Cloud State and the community? One of the big problems that we had last year was, okay, we have the piñatas, we have the place to sell the piñatas, but we don't have transportation. How to, to resolve these situations bring us to, to look for volunteers from St. Cloud State. And we found a teacher uh, from the sociology department, I guess now he's in Chile at this moment, that he, and he uh, himself and her wife uh, donate to us almost 40 hours of work using their own vehicle, bring us the piñatas back and forth, and either rented uh, some, some tables and things that we need for the, for the selling process. Um, I want just to underline that this is very a small entrepreneur piece in a rural and isolated community with the capacity to be really a world business place in the future. This year we are waiting in, to rent a place to continue the work. We uh, are waiting to receive the money from United Way to buy tables, to have a little more safe space for the kids to work, to play with us. And we will be definitely asking uh, members of this table to help us in the process. You know, I guess LBDC is part of this project and this conference, I guess, gives us the opportunity to connect. We, uh, we don't have a global market here in St. Cloud. We don't have uh, Lake Street, but we're in the process to create something like that. It's needed that we, like immigrants, refugees, we create a presence in the economical uh, market here in this area. Question that you have. 